Hey everyone, summer has finally arrived, so I'm out here on my porch. You know, nature. And I know what you're thinking, there aren't really any sea stand videos out there. Okay, so maybe there's a few. So why am I adding to the cacophony of sea stand videos? Well, on the sets that I work on, I typically see sea stands used in a variety of different ways that I haven't really seen addressed in a lot of videos. And I want to make a video about that specifically, but I didn't want it to feel incomplete. So I want to add all the basics about sea stands with this advanced usage. So without further ado, let's get into it. So why is it called the sea stand? Who cares? Why do we use it? Now that's a much better question. The sea stand is a very well loved stand for a number of reasons. First off, it's compact and stackable for transport, and that makes it the number one stand for shooting on location. It also fits under furniture, on stairs, stacks tightly for staging, and soldiers for snuggling up to frames and flags. First, let's cover the basics, and then we'll get into some contrary uses for the stands that you probably haven't seen in other videos. I say probably because I haven't watched all of the C-Stand videos, but I've watched a lot. We start off with the bare bones C-Stand. If you ask for a C-Stand when renting, you'll probably get this, but you'll probably want this. Now this is the C-Stand Complete. It comes with a grip head or a gobo head if you're American, a 40 inch extension arm with another fixed grip head at the end. All right, let's talk opening up stands. Now nothing causes more fights on sets than this. Trust me, everyone's got an opinion, but listen guys, there is no wrong way to open up a stand. There are just some ways that are better than others depending on the stand you're using and your preference. So let's go through your options. First up is my preferred method, turning the stand upside down. I prefer this because not all stands open up the same way. As well, rental stands don't really get maintained all that well and can be pretty gnarly. So this kind of solves a lot of those issues. Simply open up each leg until all the grooves match and snap into place. The second method that's equally popular is over the shoulder. This method is only reliable if you have well-maintained stands that open easily. Additionally, you have to watch behind you so that you're not going to jab someone in the face or break something. And finally, some stands with sliding legs or quick release collars just require a simple twist, just like this Kupo stand. All right, now that you got them opened up, you need to stack them and stage them. To do this, you want to place the smallest leg towards the set. This way, you simply pull back towards the set and go. Okay, grabbing the stand or handing it off. There's really only one way to do this, and if you like your fingers, you're gonna grab it with the stem and the extension arm all in one. Don't place your fingers between the stem and the extension arm because your fingers will get crushed when somebody else grabs it. And always wear gloves. Always. Once it's time to transport the stands, make sure to snug all the knobs up and call points when around people. Points! Just like bread and butter or a knife and fork, the C-Stand can't live without its best friend, the sandbag. Now, if you're stacking with one bag, it always goes on the tallest leg. It needs to stay off the ground for it to work. For bigger loads, the second bag goes on top of the first. If you need even more weight, a third bag should wrap around the back stem. And if you need four, you are using the wrong stand. Speaking of bags, a little bonus here. If you run a traveling production, then I recommend the 10 by travel bag. You basically just fill them up with sand or gravel or dirt wherever you're going. You can use C stands inside or out, but there's two things to note if you are going to use them outside. Compared to spreader stands, C stands are super tippy. So with flags or large fixtures, you're better off using spreader stands. As a bonus, when bagging spreader stands, bag on the outside where the bag strap catches on the bolt of the cross arm. Bagging in the center does very little to stabilize the stand. And if the ground is squishy, we typically use plywood pads. It's easy to think of the C-Stand as sort of a do-it-all stand, but if you're just setting up a few small lights indoors, then you might want to consider just going with lightweight aluminum spreader stands. Four to six stands will fit easily in a bag and can be carried with one hand by a child. All right, let's get into all the ways that we use C-Stands, starting with the basics. The first order of business when rigging stands is to follow the righty-tighty rule. Position yourself behind the stand with both grip heads on your right. Extend away from you with the arm over the tallest leg. With grip heads placed on the right, this ensures that the load will only serve to tighten the heads. Going in the opposite direction will cause the load to loosen the heads. No bueno. Time to talk raising the stands. First off, and most importantly, you only need to turn the knobs 45 to 90 degrees, like an on and off switch. Don't spin it. Don't turn it more than 180 degrees unless something is jammed. This is not a fidget spinner, this whole 
spinny business drives me nuts. When raising, always go with the top riser first. Otherwise, you're going to have to reach way above your head to extend it later. It's kind of like having to make a sandwich over your head. When lowering, once again, turn the knob 90 degrees and use your gloved hand as a brake. Gloved. When it comes to extension arms, a few notes. They're not all super beefy, and some are stronger than others, which means heavier fixtures may bend them, especially if fully boomed out. And again, almost all the time, you want to extend over the tall leg. And I say almost because, well, we'll get into that in a bit. When hanging a fixture, you'll most often see people slide the fixture onto the free end of the arm. This works fine, but it's restrictive and potentially dangerous. You're at risk of the fixture sliding off if not tight, and there's really no way to secure a safety chain. It also limits your lamp's adjustability. The better method is to steal a nail pin from a super clamp or just buy one separately. The first reason is that these pins have an inset safety catch. Clamp this into the grip head. Now you have a lamp that can be adjusted in any direction. This method also allows you to add a safety chain. Never hang lamps without safety chains. Especially when flying a flag, you may run into a situation where the free end of the arm sticks out. And this can cause safety issues with people not seeing it and running into it. There are two ways to solve this. First is to place a tennis ball on the end or bunch up a bunch of gaff and paper tape and tape that to the end. Sometimes I'll even hang spike tape for visibility. The second, which is actually a slightly better technique, is to lower the flag so that the free end of the extension arm sticks up. Then boom up the stem, putting the free end well above head height. Speaking of flags, if you don't have any black solid flags, you can simply go to an art store and get black foam core. Squeeze it into the flat section of the grip head. There's one last basic but very common use for C-stands, and that is the ones that have a turtle base. That means that the stem separates out from the base, and that's going to leave you with a junior receiver. You can either use a fixture that has a junior spigot or a junior to 750 adapter. Now, there's another name for this adapter. You can Google it on your own. Now it's time to get into those lesser known uses. What happens if you're tight for space, but you need to get a fixture into the corner? For this first trick, you will need four sandbags and a ferny blanket or some duvetine. Place one sandbag into the corner. Now, redirect the long leg 180 degrees and press the stand into the corner. Secure with remaining sandbags, all the while protecting the wall with the cloth. The next one is the counter boom. Sometimes booming out with heavier or larger fixtures like LED panels or even old Kino flows, no amount of realistic bagging makes it secure from tipping, especially in the unprotected angles. In this instance, you may wish to go against the grain, booming away from your tall leg and using that leg to counterbalance by bagging very generously. This increases the side-to-side -side stability in the dominant direction of force. Now this last trick is for when you need to extend out a fixture a little bit further than a regular 40 inch extension arm is going to get you. When you need to get a bit of extra length out of your boom, a popular option is to marry two 40 inch extension arms and grip heads. Now be careful to not get too carried away and overload this extension. This method should only be used for the lightest of fixtures. Now if you have to go a little bit further and a C-stand is kind of all that you got, well then here's a slightly better method. For this technique, we create a 750 boom pole with a Cardellini clamp and the stem from a turtle base stand. Some people might even call this like a mini menace arm. The first thing I want to say is to make sure to tighten the grip head with a wrench, as this additional weight and extension is much more prone to slip than with a regular extension arm. You're going to want to generously bag the stand with three sandbags and then also add a counterweight sandbag towards the back end of the boom and an anchor strap to secure it. Finally, use the super clamp to secure both the bag and the strap on the back end of the boom. Now, you have a small menace arm. In a pinch, this will work, but it's not ideal. Ideally, you really want to use a spreader stand because C-stand bases aren't really wide enough for this, and spreader stands also allow you to add a lot more sandbags. Finally, clip up the cords with ponies for fast adjustments and striking. But really, when doing this, try to avoid using a C-stand. Time to strike the set. It's been a long day and you don't want to make it through the entire day only to pull out your back or bash your face into a stand. When striking, remove the fixture first, then kick the sandbags off. You'll come back later or assign someone to collect the sandbags, allowing them to lift them properly. And that's it. Thanks so much for watching, guys. As always, please subscribe to this channel for more videos like this. And if you like what we're doing here, you know, thumbs up. And if you have any tips or you just feel compelled to tell me that I'm doing it wrong, well, there is a great place for that. That's in the comment section below. Thanks so much, guys. Until next time, peace.